Angle special report on the Russian cloud with a look at Spygate. That's what President Trump calls the growing reports that the FBI under Obama placed at least one informant or spy in his presidential campaign. Those reports also fuel suspicion on the right that the Russia investigation has been nothing more than a political coup by Obama allies in the deep state against the duly elected president of the United States in the era of an exploding surveillance state. Have we actually witnessed an administration infiltrate the presidential campaign of the opposing party. An editorial in Wednesday's Investor's Business Daily points out how timing is everything. The IBD noted that the timeline of the FBI's Russia investigation keeps shifting. And the earlier the probe began, quote, the less likely it is that it had anything to do with Russian involvement in the 2016 elections, but everything to do with stopping the surprising surge of Trump during the GOP primaries and beyond. Let's examine that prospect with some top-notch experts. Former FBI Special Agent Jeff Beatty is in Orlando. In Washington, Bill Benny, who served more than 30 years as a top intel official with the NSA before turning whistleblower. And here in New York, Steve Rogers, a former member of FBI Joint Terrorism Task Force. Steve, we'll start with you. I have a theory here, and one's bad and one's a little worse. First, the Obama administration thought that there was Russian infiltration, so they used the Trump officials as bait in order to lure the Russians in. But nothing materialized, and they looked around and they thought, you know, I have some Trump people on the hook here, let's turn the screws. Or it was deceitful from the very beginning, they wanted eyes and ears on the Trump campaign, so without any probable cause, they cooked up this <laughs> echo chamber of spies and lies and misinformation to get the surveillance. What do you think? Jesse, if they were going for the Russians, they would have gone to the Trump campaign. They would have there in their hands the greatest assets of human intelligence right in the Trump campaign. They would have wired those individuals up and said, look, the Russians are coming after you. We need you. We need to wire you up. Let's trap the Russians. It was deceitful from the beginning. They were never going after the Russians, Jesse. They were going after Donald Trump. Yeah, you know, Bill, where are the Russians here in this investigation? Because we, we see a lot of spies and FBI people. We haven't seen a lot of Russian spies. Have they ever materialized? Uh, not that I can see. I mean, uh, even the evidence they put forth to say was a Russian hack from Guccifer 2 turns out to be a, a very clear fabrication, in fact, a very poor one. And it's uh, provable through forensics that it's not, uh, that it's not a valid uh, download remotely. So, I mean, uh, all of it was fabricated. So, Jeff, like, uh, like Bill just mentioned, this all started with the so-called hack of the Democrats' computers. Now, the counter-intel investigation opened up a couple weeks after the emails released in the summer with Debbie Wasserman Schultz. Remember, they rigged the primary, all that stuff. Why didn't the FBI then go look at the server at the DNC and do a forensic audit? I mean, wouldn't that be the first place you'd look if you were looking for Russian infiltration? Well, you know, that goes back to 2015, and, and I'm, a, I'm a believer in your course of action, too, that you outlined at the top of the show, Jesse. Uh, but let me just give you what I see as the bluff, the bottom line up front. You know, they, the FBI gave a defensive briefing to the Democratic National Committee when they had information that there was a foreign <coughs> entity trying to uh, sway, influence, or move into or penetrate the Democratic uh, apparatus. They did not do that for the Republican apparatus, as Steve alluded to. You know, what they did from the very beginning was treat the Republican apparatus differently. Democrat, defensive briefing, let's work together. Republican, I really think it was nothing but a fig leaf to use other government agencies to introduce a Russian raison d'etre to explain why uh, they could then go ahead, launch an investigation for two purposes, Jesse. I mm -hmm. think, first of all, to get, to get political intelligence as to what was going on on the inside of right. the campaign so that they could use it. But secondly, to be able to destroy their enemy. These guys, not to use a uh, Chris Matthews reference, these guys were playing hardball. And, you know, 
Please, no Chris Matthews to... references on the show. Those are now banned for <laughs> the rest are... of the hour. Okay, no more. No more. No, but, but, but you, picked, I mean, no, you, you did know, pick up on a serious issue, though. Hold on, let me just get it. You, you, destroy you your enemy or they'll destroy you. Right. So <laughs> they, they have suspicions about either Paige or Manafort or Papadopoulos in the spring. And instead of maybe interviewing Papadopoulos or Page or whoever, Manafort, they don't do any of that. They don't even alert Donald Trump that they, you know, hey, we're supposed to protect you. Maybe, you know, there could be some issues. Instead, they just wiretap everybody and send spy rings throughout the whole campaign. It doesn't seem like an anti-Russia operation. It seems like an anti Trump Jesse, operation. I, I believe the state. They didn't was even go into the during, DNC to I see believe, if there was a Russian in there right. opening a back door the, to I, the servers. I, I right. believe the stage was set the day James Comey testified before Congress and gave Hillary Clinton a pass. Never really pursued the 33,000 missing <laughs> emails. Number one, what happened to Bill Clinton and the famous tar tarmac uh, meeting at the airport with Loretta Lynch? They gave her a pass. And now, as I said earlier, why didn't they go to the Trump campaign and say, "Look, we think the Russians are coming." What we need you to do is to wire your people up. We want to trap the Russians. They tried to trap President Donald Trump, and they failed. That's because they had them all wired. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> they were all copied. I mean, everything. Once you get one person in a campaign, you have the whole campaign. That's a two-hop principle. That's you, right. You, That's you, right. You and, they, and, and they ha half these guys were coming in and out of Trump Tower. The yep. other couple guys were overseas. They threw everything at this campaign. They threw spies, informants. And uh, keeping, secret keeping, subpoenas, yep. electronic surveillance, fake dossiers, unmasking. Every technicality that you use in, in, in an investigation, they threw everything at these guys. And you know what? Donald Trump still won the election. Yeah. No <laughs> I mean, what does that say? No evidence. Hey, no evidence of collusion. No. no. Right. And keep in mind, though, uh, Jesse, that they, they're using the NSA databases to do all this spying. And those go back to 2001, so they can retroactively analyze all the data on everyone in the campaign. Right. Now, Clapper, uh, as we all remember, uh, one of the top intelligence chiefs under President Barack Obama, has been doing the rounds on television, and he disputes the whole spying thing, kind of. Here's his spin. I think he's uh, uh, deliberately uh, spinning the narrative uh, that whereby he's a victim of... The, the deep state uh, spying on him or spying on the campaign, which is, which is not the case. It's my, what I would call my informed opinion that given the massive effort the Russians made and the number of citizens that they touched, to me it just exceeds logic and credulity that they didn't affect the election. And it's my belief they actually turned it. So I ask you, was the FBI spying on Trump's campaign? No, I, I, no he, they were not. They were spying on a, a term I don't particularly like, but on what the Russians were doing. Why doesn't he like that? He should be happy that well, we're doing Well, he should be. Okay, first of all, <laughs> James Clapper's on The View. I don't think the top intel guy from any team should be on The View. Second of all, <laughs> he just admitted they spied, but wait. Yep. They were just trying to help President Trump. President Trump should thank them for spying on the campaign, right? Jesse, uh, one thing you, know, you said the, opening up, and the question is, did the Obama administration know about this? Did the Justice Department under Obama know about this? I don't believe for one minute they didn't know. I believe Obama knew about right. what was going on. I believe his Justice Department knew what was going on, and it's all falling apart. You know, that's a great point, uh, Bill. Um, we have evidence that the White House was in the loop on this. We have some Paige Strzok texts. At one point, they say, quote, the White House is running this, talking right. about this counterintelligence operation. There are these briefings with the top people in the Obama team. White House chief of staff was in on the loop on this. How could Obama not know that this was happening? I mean, after all, when you have the, uh, it, just take the Steele uh, dossier, for example, that, that was uh, uh, some fellow from MI6, which is the equivalent of CIA, and then CIA was involved, FBI was involved in the Department of Justice. The only place those, uh, those organizations come to a point where it can be ordered and coordinated is the president. Yeah, and so, we, we do have records now that this spy, or whatever you want to call him, over there in England, he was getting paid pretty handsomely yep, yep. by the Obama administration right around the same time he was running these dirty tricks. This guy was connected 
to MI6, CIA. He'd done some dirty tricks in elections in the past. He'd been outspoken yep. about his support for Hillary Clinton and even tried to get a job within the Trump administration afterwards. So, uh, Jeff, I mean, th th it's, it's all coming apart. It is, you know, and, and to, to see Clapper and Brennan out there uh, with the titles of, you know, former director, et cetera, you know, these guys are no longer intelligence officials, and it's time for the president to start striking back at them. And, and by that, I mean a lot of these senior people get to keep their security clearances so that they can consult uh, within people with government. There's no need for their to have security clearances anymore. Start taking away Brennan's security clearance or access to anything, Clapper's security clearance or access to anything, because they have become partisans. They are not out there doing what they're supposed to have done as professionals, which is to do your job and be blind, be agnostic when it comes to party politics. That's they're a just bold not, move to make, and I think President Trump would probably make that move or at least uh, flirt with doing that. You brought up an interesting point about people, though, still in the FBI or still in the DOJ that do have these clearances. We're hearing word here at Fox News that there may be some people coming forward, maybe some whistleblowers that might like to talk right. about how James Comey ran these operations, how he dealt with the Clintons, how he dealt with the Trump campaign. Let's just go around. If you guys were still in the government, would you guys come forward and, and testify and lawyer up? Well, the good what, news is uh, the absolutely. OIG report's about to come out, and the OIG has the ability to protect uh, the whistleblowers within the Department of Justice and within the FBI. So I'm hopeful, optimistic that some of those folks will do the right thing and get protected by the OIG, and we might see some of their content coming out in his report. Steve, what about you? Jesse, they need to break down the blue wall of silence. When the ship is sinking, no one is going to throw you a life raft. And uh, Bill, what do you think? Well, I mean, according to the Constitution, you have, to, you have recourse to Congress, and that's exactly what I did uh, in 2002 and won. You won. I mean, I went to, to Congress all to right. report some of the, uh, the, the spying on U.S. citizens. Not, uh, it's all a lie when they tell you they're after the Russians. All their tapping points in the Fairview program are internal in the U.S. They're, they're, there's 11 points that they could pick up every foreigner coming into or out of or through the United States. If they stayed at those 11 points, they'd get them all. Yeah, and you know but what? If they actually, you know, the, the Russians that they did indict, all they were doing was calling Hillary names on Facebook. Not yeah. that bad. <laughs> Guys, got to run. Thank you. Up next, two incredibly 